Proving that jackass stunts don't have to be harmful to your reproductive system, we've got the classier tomfoolery of Pronkst Group. Plus, if it's got wheels and makes you look like a tool, then we'll strap it on Brendan. Watch as he surrenders his dignity to the roller cycle. And Chris Gore immersed himself in trippy sci-fi films you've never even heard of for a bleary-eyed DV Tuesday. Now get ready to eat animal crackers off Liv Tyler's belly because it's Attack of the Show. Big up on this. The attack of the show. Do you hear the crowd going wild? Do you uh, hear them? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, no, wait. no, not really. Sarah's going wild on the couch, of course. <laughs> and I know, I know Raise she's especially. The, you're especially excited this I, week. I, I can hardly contain myself. I may be the same old Kevin Pereira that, <laughs> that we've come to know and uh, love. You are. Uh, that's yeah, for sure. Clearly. Not what I'm excited about. <clears throat> You're excited about Tom Fult. That's Mr. Right. Tom Fult joining us on the show all Hi, week. Tom. Great to be here. Uh, it, is, it is an honor to be basking in your presence. You have beautiful skin. Thank and you. you also have an amazing website that was really the, the, the only site that I ever cared to visit. It was the reason I installed Flash. I'm just going to say it flat out. Wow. Newgrounds.com. I'm sure uh, Macromedia will be pleased to hear that. Yeah, they should. They should know. Are you getting a kickback from them at all? No. You should no. be. Yes. Make some phone calls. Send some emails. Yeah, I should. I should. What's, what's the Newgrounds? If you, if you could describe it in a sentence or two for the to, kids. To uh, sum it up... Uh, Basically, the original biggest Flash community on the internet is how I like to see it. Ever. And the Flash uh, portal lets anybody submit something. Yeah, o over 100 submissions a day. Most of them get deleted by the users. Uh, the cream of the crop rises to the top, and you get your daily entertainment. There you have it. And aside from that, aside, aside from like accepting game submissions, you've also went off and made some of your own, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, one of our games, Alien Hominid, uh, that I made with artist Dan Paladin, we went on to team up with some friends and make console versions of it for PS2 and GameCube. Is that on store shelves now? Yes, that's on store <laughs> shelves now. Well, you know, they should go out and buy it, right, Sarah? That's right, Kevin. There we go. <laughs> Sarah, how's it going? It's going really well. I had a wonderful long weekend. What yeah. about you guys? I, I'm hurting from my weekend. You relax. Well, that's though. what makes it good. Yeah, I guess. I had a relaxing yeah. weekend. Yeah, it's good to hear. Saturday was a little rough, but you know. Right on. I played a lot, a lot of Medios. I bought a DS. I, I drank a lot of beer. Okay, there that's we go. The she wins. She wins. Straight there we go. All right. To the mouth. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the show before, Tom. Oh yeah. We we like to we like to share cool stuff. Yes. And I found some interesting websites today, and I'd like to throw them, throw them at you, see what you think. Right. Feel free to make fun of them. All but right. I, I, don't think, right. I don't think there's a single weak side in here today. I'm going to be honest. The first is the guidebook, or G-U-I-D book, if you will. It's, a, it's an archive of all the graphical user interfaces ever, pretty much. So everything from Amiga to Apple II to the IRIX. I mean, they got OS II. And you pick, pick an operating system. What do you like? Well, see, I already know this is a good site because they have Amiga at the top, and that's my favorite yeah. operating system of all time. Is it really? Yes. Is it because of nostalgia? Like, every, did you actually use it? Every day after school, I'd come home, and I'd animate on Deluxe Paint 4, uh, wow. spend hours making cartoons that no one ever saw. Cause of course. Because web wasn't around back then. Did your parents understand? Yeah, they were very supportive, actually. Oh, man, I'm sorry yes. to hear that. That's all right. But, uh, uh, so, you, so you like the Amiga? Yes, love the Amiga. Well, now you have pictures of it to relive that childhood experience. In yeah, fact, it kind of, you know, I feel like I shed, shed a tear looking at the Amiga oh, don't, there. Don't, don't, it ruin the makeup. Brings back these memories. Don't ruin the makeup. Childhood. It's, it's there. They even have a timeline to see what, what came out around when. Very cool site. Very comprehensive. Very cool. Not as interesting as this site here. Now, I'm going to throw this out here. I don't know if this is real or not. Uh, it's, okay. it's weird enough to be real, but it just, it's too funny to, to be real. I don't know. It's, it's a list of Japanese smoking etiquette banners. So apparently, you know, the, the, the Japanese folk are very courteous, very kind, and they have these, uh, these banners placed up with, you know, smoking etiquette. For example, the, a cigarette, a lit cigarette, is carried at the height of a child's face. <laughs> In case he wants to take a puff. Sure, it's right there. It's, yeah. it's handy. You don't have to extend your arm too much. They make great ashtrays. Just put it out right on his cheek. Mm -hmm. If he's crying, there you go, on the subway even. Yes. That's not the, the message. Well, it's clearly not the message. It's, <laughs> I don't, what is the message there? I think? think it's, you know, be careful because you might have your smoke right in a child's face. See, she always cuts through it. She mm. sees the, the mm. purity in the message. I thought it was for yeah. extinguishing it myself. No. Uh, uh, how about these cigarette butts are always more noticeable when I'm walking my dog? Well, dogs love sniffing butts. So. Sarah, care to argue? <laughs> how, do you, how do you refute that one? That was funny. No, no, I, I'm, I'm with you guys on that one. See? Hardcore. The wonderful mm -hmm. diagram of the gentleman being aware with the dog. Yes. There's a bunch of these So then my dog will like that. Yeah, this one, when, when, which, if you threw, would you throw a cigarette butt on the ground if people were watching you? And to illustrate that, they have an owl, and this man's dumping it like it's a dead yes. body. He's just disposing of the world's largest cigarette butt. This reminds me of the Tootsie Pop. 
yes. commercials. Yeah, how many butts does it take to yes. make the Indian cry? There you have it. A uh, bunch of smoking banners. And now, uh, this one's interesting. I don't know if you know about LARPers at all. Uh, the live-action role players. These are people who dress up uh, and, and act out kind of their MMO-esque mm -hmm. fantasies or mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons things. They role-play yes. Sarah. Plays as a uh, level 13 mage. Absolutely. What's your what's your special attack, Sarah? When you when you summon a demon? Uh, it's the lightning. Do you uh, do you have a special hand gesture or no? You just there it is. Okay. See? Okay. That's and that's how Sarah yeah. larps. My <laughs> fire might not be especially effective against that one. <laughs> well, no. you have no saving throw, yeah. Tom. So these these guys, there, there's a bunch of larpers in in Canada, and, and a group of people decided to dress up as zombies and invade one of their larping. Fests here. So Good here fun. we have the, the zombies gathering at McDonald's. Okay. They, you know, getting their eat on before that sort the invasion. Of is what it's like at McDonald's. It's a zombie esque tradition, yes. And, uh, and here they are actually attacking some LARPers. Uh, clearly, the shield, no match for the fangs. Uh, and the zombies were relentless. Even after they were taken down, some of them got back up and rejoined the now, battle. Well, if the zombie zombies bites. Do. If they bite a LARPer, does the LARPer become a zombie? That's a good question. I don't think they did. I read the write up uh -huh. and, I, and it made no mention of zombified LARPers, uh -huh. but I think it should have. In That's the end, though, fair play. in the end, though, they did play fair. They shook hands when they were done. The LARPers won. Zombies lost. Yeah. It happens because they didn't become zombies. Exactly. They had the duct tape swords. Yes. What are you going to do? And finally, this this I'm especially proud of. This is nothing new. I just kind of wanted to maybe make Sarah squeam a little bit in the, in the beginning of the show. Chapter nine art project today. Well, here you go. Great. This is the art of uh, maybe that Captain and Coke will agree with this website. <laughs> this is the art of Jerome Abramovich. He's a body and performance artist, and he implanted bags under his forehead and in his cheeks what? so that he can inject silicone into them to make his face pop up. Sarah, how do you feel, huh? That's not real. It's totally real. He's been, what? He's, the guy's been on Ricky Lake. Oh, my God. I mean, come on. <laughs> Clearly, you've made it in the body mod world when Ricky Lake is well, profiling you. Ricky Lake is big time. Look at that. Marilyn Manson really needs to get in on this. Oh, that's, that's I think that's too creepy even for Marilyn. i got to be honest. Look at that. And he can he even should put hang it. out with that uh, Catwoman, Jocelyn Wildenstein or whatever her name is. Catwoman? You guys don't read enough tabloids, No, obviously. you lost me, but there you what have it. There? No, <laughs> Sarah, I'm you, about. Were you with her on that one? <laughs> no. I mean, I tr I'm, I'm sorry, I tried, but you know, I, don't, I don't do it. Plastic surgery. There you have it. <laughs> Silicone bags. All right, now, we're looking for you to, to break in our, our guest host for this week, Mr. Fultz. You, you can handle the tough questions, right? Yes. All right, yes. so give us a call. Number is 800-839-7880. Ask him anything you'd like. He, he's a big boy, he'll handle it. Email us as well, g4tv.com slash askaots. And you can chat with us, of course, at chat. G4TV.com. And interestingly enough, the person who calls today, Tom, feel free to rifle through. Wow. They're going to get a box of crap. And it I don't mean. Yeah, not, not actual crap. Well, I mean, that's actually, that's really good. Yeah, that's risky life. Uh, and this is where the crap comes the in. The front of a VCR. Front of a VCR. There you go. Funny. And you got a uh, excellent hat. Mummy toys. Look at that. A bunch of randomness in this box. And you're going to get it. Now, for those of you who uh, hate to have the, the show ruined, I have to warn you spoilers. They're coming up. Here we go. If Bam Margera and Steve O had actually gone to college, the results may have been something like Pronk's group. You like the crap? Attack of the show, baby. Attack. Attack of the show. Attack. Have you ever been tempted to disrupt a lecture hall with an impromptu musical number, huh? Well, then you're dangerously unstable and probably a fan of Prongs Group. Representing the Merry Pranksters today are Gabe Leidman and Mike Barry. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you so much for coming much. on. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be seated next to you guys. I am a big fan of all of your work. Uh, Thank you. And wow. uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, what your actual work is. But how do you compare like a Prongs Group to like a Jackass or a Tom Green or, or a Punked even? It's not, I mean, you're pranking people, but it's not, it doesn't seem like it follows the lines of any of those shows. I guess if we have like any philosophy, it would be that we try and make our pranks fun for the people who are there at, at the moment. Right. So that they'll go home and say, so random, I was just studying and this kid next to me stood up and started singing rather than like, I was trying to see a movie and I got pantsed. Right. You Some know? guy kicked me in the nuts. And, exactly. Oh yeah, that was really funny. No, no, you guys, are, you guys play along and try to involve people. Right. right. And also, you know, the reactions that, that we don't really know what reaction we're ever going to get. And, right. You know, with a, you know, a jackass style prank, they're, you know, getting either a gross out kind of reaction or, or something more specific. But for us, we're just kind of, uh, you know, flying by the seat of our pants. Now, what kind of reactions do you get? Because the, the, first, the first clip that really introduced me to you that I saw on the net was the library musical. And that's the one that stands out for me the most. Uh, you know, I, I saw the reactions in the clip, but what happens after that? Do you guys, are you known for doing this kind of stuff, you know, at your school or? Um, not, I don't think so. I mean, we did them, you know, every once in a while, but never in front of the same groups, never in the same uh, venues. So, and 
obviously not everybody saw the website, so right. uh, people didn't necessarily know what we were uh, doing. Uh, the reaction that the reactions are what a lot of what you see on the website uh, now. The musicals usually got applause, which I thought was really great. People were like impressed with the performance. Were you, are you concerned going into something like this that maybe some jock in the library is going to stand up and throw a chair? I mean, or, does that did that thought ever cross your mind, or do you think you think you're going to get what you get going into it? In the library, I was afraid that an irate. Uh, nerdy student would, you know, collar me and throw me out and right. uh, something similar with the lecture musical. The professor would stop everything. And, sure. You know, when you're doing those kinds of pranks, you only have one shot, so. Exactly. You can't just move on to the next class as long and just as hit we, play again. We felt right? like you could handle anything as long as it wasn't any total disruption. Right, right. Now, how did the group actually get started? Like, when did, did you guys form for the purpose of doing something like this? Um, yeah, it, it, the group started as an idea on a napkin um, that... Uh, you know, it was an idea with, from our producer, Peter Keckley, um, and our web designer, Lyndon Kennedy. And um, they just kind of gave a rough idea of, you know, a comedy website, a prank website, a public performance website. And they um, really, before we came up with any uh, solid pranks and filmed anything, we just did a lot of publicity and yeah. really uh, showed it off to everybody. Um, and then... Um, you know, they brought their friends in. We came to Columbia after they were there, and uh, we did other uh, creative projects at Columbia with them, and kind of got folded into the group. All right. So tell me about the, the lecture hall musical, because I know we're going to show it in a second. But 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 set us up for us. How how long was this in planning? You know, how did you pick the people that were going to be involved? Are they all members of Pranks Group? Um, well, I mean, yes, essentially mm -hmm. uh, anybody who helps us out is a member of Pranks Group. Right. Um, but uh, the Song took a you know a while to write. Brian Jacobs, um, who's a member of our group, writes all of our songs, and he put together uh, you know Hey Teach, and then um, the night before we snuck into the lecture hall uh, late at night, and um, we had a, a person who was kind of directing and choreographing, and a couple of kids who uh, we had all done other projects at Columbia with. Something good to know about the lecture musical is that that is the very last chemistry class of the entire year. And uh, it's the teacher says like so. Are there any questions? It's right before their final exam, and that's the answer. Oh, that's when it happens. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's take a look. This is the lecture hall musical from Pronk's group. Hey, teach! I've got a question. We come to class every day. It seems we all fall asleep. We've lost all our dreams. There is no inspiration. But when did we become this way? So disillusioned, so broad day. I can make the calculation. Can I borrow your TI-83? It's no wonder why we're here. You must think we only party and drink beer. But all we need is just one chance to extend our love. So you guys, the, the, the class goes wild, and what do the professors do? They, they fail you? Do they kick you out? We weren't members of that class. We just showed up. You just crashed it. Mm -hmm. right. And um, there were two professors teaching that class. The first professor who was teaching at the time just sat back and let us do our thing. And uh, the second professor was sitting in the front row, and as we left after doing the prank, he ran out after us and said, Great job. That was so wonderful. Brilliant. Brilliant. So what's, we were lucky. What's next for you guys? What's next for the site, TV shows? You're doing the prank script, well, the, the musical, the movie? What, what is what is what's coming out? <laughs> the miniseries. Yes. The miniseries. Uh, yes. Short answer is yes. We're doing all those things. We like re we relaunched the site in April. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really popular, and uh, we have been, just been getting together really regularly. We've got a huge list of new pranks to do, um, and yeah, we're thinking towards the future. Things like TV and. Great. I think I TV is a good I can't thank you enough for us. crashing, for not crashing. <laughs> I was freaking out about it. Thank you guys so much for coming thank on. Thank you. Really sure. Keep up the great work. Thanks. Huge fan. Thank you both. All right, for more information on Pranks Group, visit attackoftheshow.com. We'll give you all the links you need. Now, look, our show can't conform to your schedule, so just meet us halfway at least. Besides, we've got Brendan strapped into a roller cycle. What could be more fun than that? I can think of a lot. And as much as we hate to admit it, not everything is available on DVD, but we'll show you how to digitize those annoying videotapes after this. All right, now that the firecracker and beer haze has hopefully worn off, we need to remind you that once again, time is running out to get in your user created for this week. Now, in case you forgot, we asked you to photograph or videotape yourself in a 4th of July parade wearing or carrying something that referenced Attack of the Show. That's, that's the show, and we're going to have the results tomorrow. Now, 
Switching gears, say you're a fan of old TV shows like Emergency. I know you're a huge Emergency buff, huge right? Emergency fan. You've got you 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 bought a catalog on eBay of all the VHS tapes, oh, yeah. right? It's not out on DVD yet. Okay, what are you gonna do? Got to make your own DVDs. Exactly. Their tapes are falling apart. You got to figure out a way to get that that tired ass analog media onto DVD, and that's what I'm gonna do for you today, Tom, and for our folks at home. I'm excited. I'm well, excited. here we go. I can tell. Sony DV Direct. This is the first product we're gonna talk about. Look at that. It's sleek. It's sexy. Go ahead and touch yes. it. Touch it's it. Rub it. No, rub the front. Rub the front. It's really good. Give it a nice little... Okay, Ooh. not that. Don't rub it that hard. Don't be gentle. This is uh, $279. The, the, uh, the bonus here is that it's an external DVD recorder, and it can record on the fly from any analog source. Anything. So, well, actually, you can't even do it from digital, because it's got Firewire, it's got S-Video, it's got uh, your composite right there. You literally give it a source, whether it's a TV, a VCR, a TiVo, mm -hmm. you name it, an Xbox, if you want to record a clan match. That's the S-Video. Uh, something, yeah, S-Video in the back. You literally hit, you know, hit record on the front, boom, it's going to do it on the fly. Hmm. Not bad, right? Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I can convert all my uh, old VHS. Can you tape your, uh, like, your Warcraft antics with that? Oh, you totally could. In fact, and what's even better is let's say you're, you're doing like a big run. Let's say you have a Leroy Jenkins character, you know something's going to happen. You can tell it to uh, record and set like chapter increments. So you can say, hey, every five minutes or excellent. every ten minutes, I want a chapter skip. Because so I, can... I know I like to just skip to when he runs in. Exactly. Yeah. That's the best That's part of it. Stuff. And there you have it. You can go and, and skip over your painful childhood memories. It also functions as an external PC burner as well. So it's a two-for-one. Again, it's the Sony DV Direct, $279. And uh, on the other side of things, if you want to go internal, there's a PCI-based solution. It's by ATI. It's the TV Wonder Elite for $149. Uh, standard fare, it'll capture MPEG-2, but it does have noise reduction for analog sources, which is a big plus. Okay. So here we have like a DVD player connected. Let me hit play. Uh, there it is. It's the sideways triangle. I always forget. Uh, and we can go on our Power Cinema software, and I can say, hey, I want to capture some video. So if I look at my settings, I mean, it's pretty bare bones. I can say pan and scan. It's going to be letterbox. Uh, when I go to actually capture video, sorry, I'm clicking through rather quickly here, but I go to capture video, it's going to fire up the source that we have selected. So there's, there's old drunk Vader, and I can go to settings. We can capture best. We can, you know, set what we want to do. It's going to go right there. Uh, and again, capture it to pure MPEG-2. You can burn it out to DVD if you'd like. Does this have all the same chapter settings and whatnot that the other one has? You know, no, it doesn't. That's going to be with, your, with the DVD authoring software okay, that you okay. use. But, but theoretically, yes, it, it, it will support it if the software does. And what's really nice, it's the same chip that, that they use in like TiVos and stuff like that and has a built-in over-the-air antenna. So that's just another source that you get with it. Both very solid products. Uh, I think probably two of the best products. You know, different solutions. Same, same results. Yeah. yeah. I could definitely go for the Sony one. There you go. I Actually, got a level of VHS. I'm going to put this one in my car. You can, right. we'll, we'll get you another one for sure. Right. For more information on how to convert your outdated media, see our show notes at attackoftheshow.com. That's a website. Now, if you can't sit quietly through a couple of commercials, consider rehab. Because on the way, it's the feed, and it requires, really, it requires intense concentration, Tom. Right. You've got to be there. All in right. the zone. You in the zone? zone. You're getting, getting in the zone. And Brendan, plus the roller cycle, minus self-respect, divided by humiliation, equals television gold. That's next. Welcome back to the show. Hey, just because you partied too hard this weekend doesn't mean we're slowing down for you kids. No, we still have DVD Tuesday on the way because, well, quite frankly, the outdoors is scary. Plus, we have an edition of It Came From eBay because, well, because the outdoors is scary. And our Boost Mobile Live performance comes courtesy of Mardo. See, oh, we're making up for last Friday. Yes, we are. Now, for all you people who go, screw Brendan Moran. He gets to drink and talk to hot chicks all the time. Lucky. Remember that nothing is free, folks. No, there's always a price for perks like that. The price? Getting strapped into things like the roller cycle. Sitting here next to the roller cycle. It's a wheel attached to a motor that pushes you along when you're on rollerblades. And I can't decide whether it's a great idea or a terrible one. And I'm about to find out. You're going to have to help me. It's important to uh, note that I've actually never in my life put on rollerblades. I've been on ice skates a couple times, and I suck at that. The hardest part about these things is that I can't stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's coming after me. Ah. 
This is the stupidest Stop! God! The brakes don't work! Oh. Oh, that hurt. I know I shouldn't do this, but it goes up to 25 miles an hour. We're just gonna see how fast I can get to that corner. Ready? Last off. Oh, jeez. I stayed on my feet. One problem I have is the handlebars get bent when you drop it. And when you want to keep going, you got to bang them back into place. See, when you gas it, it doesn't immediately floor you. So it takes a while to warm up, which is good. I am getting better at this, though. Oh, God. Now, if rollerblading isn't really your thing, and clearly it's not mine, you can try the roller cycle with a skateboard, which I'm pretty sure is also a bad idea. This is so much better than those rollerblades. Whoa! The other problem is the brakes are like bike brakes, and you can't stop on a dime. And I need to stop on a dime. And the other problem is, it pushes you along, but I also have to hold these things the whole time, and it's awkward. Oh my god. If you do know how to rollerblade, it makes it fun. Yeah. Well, if I wanted to be the stupidest looking person in my neighborhood, I'd go out and buy one. Clearly, right the roller cycle. Yeah, as, as if you couldn't look nerdier than, than riding a Segway. They, yeah. they figured out the product that'll do I it. I like Segways, but yeah. that's no Segway. No, not at all. Not at all. In fact, when, when, when the guy was doing it right at the end, the whole room started laughing. He's like, no, no, that's actually how it's supposed to look. Really? All right, now, look, we took news and information and some tequila, put it into a blender, mixed it up, and made the feed. <laughs> The July, of course, is a holiday based on getting completely hammered and blowing crap up. And that's true even if you work for NASA. As you all probably heard, NASA launched a satellite Sunday night with the, the sole intention of colliding with a comet half the size of Manhattan and blowing a huge hole in it. Well, it succeeded, pleasing both scientists who believe that the comet's nucleus may hold the secrets of the universe and NASA's apparent new head of operations, Jerry Bruckheimer. But not everybody is high-fiving over this. A Russian astrologer is allegedly suing NASA for, quote, ruining the balance of nature and deforming her horoscope. She may end up recanting her lawsuit, though, as soon as her moon moves out of the house of crazy. You know, uh, you clip a microphone on some people and you point a camera at them and they'll say just about anything. In fact, we bank on that around here, but sometimes... There are consequences. A software engineer from the UK was allegedly fired after defending peer-to-peer -peer networks while being interviewed on a BBC News program. His employers deemed his comments inappropriate. But it appears that the man was asked on the program because he used to run a site called DVD Core that pointed people to pirated movies online and not as a representative of the company. Still, whether or not the company was attempting to protect its image or simply fired the guy for not disclosing his legally murky past, this is just another example of Peter being a minefield for all involved. Can don't ask, don't tell apply to downloading? Now, I want bionic implants. You want bionic implants. Who doesn't want bionic implants? Well, actually, Bill Gates apparently does not. When he was speaking at a Microsoft event in Singapore, Gates acknowledged that technological innovations will one day see computers implanted into the human body and may help the blind see and the deaf hear. While he was certainly behind these advancements, he said that personally, though, he will not be signing up for robot parts. He said, quote, I'm happy to have the computer over there and I'm over here.
But this is bad news for the future William Gates IV, who will have his new operating system trounced by Steve Jobs 8.0. Now, a special report for all you mathemagicians out there. If you thought the Japanese were satisfied winning hot dog eating contests this weekend, you are mistaken, my friend, because a 59-year-old man from Chiba set a new world record by reciting pi to 83,431 digits over the course of two days, almost doubling his previous record. He had gotten up to 54,000 his first time around, but he had to stop because the hall he chose to host his number spewing had a time constraint, and they had to give him the boots. So sad. This time, of course, he chose a place with no such limits, where he could ramble on and, and on and on. The fact that the man's name is Akira, and we're not making that up, has millions of anime fans convinced this is a sign that Neo Tokyo will be a reality any day now. And that's the feed. I've got nothing else for you. Sarah, you, you gave us plenty. Good. We expect nothing Good. more. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm out. Brilliant feed. Brilliant. I'm out. Uh, your thoughts on non bionic implants, would you? Um, Maybe not the face, the, the face silicone you know, implants, but... I'm already stronger than the average man. Pretty much. Faster. It would just be little, it would be icing on the I cake. I could use the heat point, lasers though. in my eyes. That'd be sweet. Welding. Maybe uh, super cuts could come up with a bionic implant yes. for Gates, because yes. it's not, not getting any help anytime yes. soon. It's mm. not happening. Uh, Tom, you're here. The, the, the folks at home are going crazy. We can actually hear them here in the studio. In fact, some of them have actually picked up their telephones, dialed some numbers, and have questions for you. Can you believe that? That's, that's commitment right do you want, there. Do you want to answer some of them? Sure. Let's yeah, do let's that. Brian shot. joins us on the phone from Tucker. Are you there, Brian? Yeah, I'm here. Brian, how are you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? Uh, doing very well. You enjoying the show thus far? Yeah, I'm a big fan of the show. Cool, thank you. Good to hear, good to hear. You, you a fan of Newgrounds? Come on. Uh, yes, I got a good question. Oh, here we uh, go. All right. Let's hear it. All right. Uh, how long did it take you to make your first Flash animation? Now, that's a, that's a good question. What, what, yeah. First of all, what was your first Flash animation? My first Flash animation was actually my dad's Ham Radio Club logo, uh, Keystone, zooming towards the camera. That right. was my first Flash animation. You didn't do like any test animations first in Flash? No, like... I, I drew it, I made it into a symbol, and I tweened it. And how long? That took me a few hours. Now it would take less than a minute. Less than a minute. All right, but, uh, so a few hours to make a, an image yes. come at you. Flash is easy to learn, a lifetime to master. You can make an animation in your first day, but you can spend the rest of your life you know, improving on it. For comparison, how long did it take you to make a game like Pico? You know? Well, Pico actually only took uh, about a month. I hate you. But, uh, but Pico 2 has been stretched on for years now, and I haven't finished it because it keeps All getting right. on the back burner. Finish that up. All yeah. right. David joins us on the phone. David, are you there? Yeah, what's going on? Not much. Tom's here. He's, he's ready and willing to answer your question, David. All right, cool. Uh, what genre are the new Flash, anim Flash animation games going to be? What genre? Uh, as far as in general or for yeah, what I'm working on? in general. On? Oh, in general, I think we're going to see a lot more uh, complex 2D games, a lot more complex 2D s side-scrolling shooters, uh, run and jump and shoot. A lot of people are learning to make really good tile-based platform engines. So we're, we're awesome. going to see a lot more games like Sonic and Mario right. that will actually feel as good as Sonic and Mario. You think we'll see a lot of innovation, too, a lot of uh, styles that we haven't seen before? I mean, Actually, yeah, there's this new game where it's like a, it's a physics model of a person that you can kind of toss around the never ending falls. Falling, yeah. right? the, the chick in the bikini yeah. with the... Yeah. 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 And that, stuff like that's really innovative and cool and yeah. has definite gaming potential. Uh, there's the Naka Crash with the bike. You've the crazy, that? yeah, the, 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 yeah. We showed it off on the show. And yeah. uh, the Kitten Cannon and stuff like that. There's a lot of fun, fun new games that are really Very innovative. Games. Very cool, Tom. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now, do whatever you have to. Slap a, a post-it note on your forehead or leave a body part on the couch as collateral. Just make sure that you come right back because it came from eBay. It waits for no man, Tom. No man. And DV Tuesday brings you a slightly more animated version of the Fantastic Four. It's coming up. Thing. From the Fantastic Four. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. It's time. Yeah, no. Her. I can't wait. Her. I can't wait for that. You're going I'm, to the I'm seeing tonight, it tonight. Huh? I'm seeing it tonight. So. I think you'll like it. I think I you will. I can't wait. All right, yeah. so let's get straight to DV Dooza. That's why we're here. We're starting with Immortal. What is Immortal? Uh, Immortal is actually a French film. It's actually based on a French comic book. Ah, yes. And it's directed by Enki Bilal. And I think I pronounce that badly. But, but it, what's interesting about it is uh, it mixes CG animation with live actors, kind of the way they did with Sky Captain sure. in the World of Tomorrow. You know, they just shot everything on a blue screen. And it stars Charlotte Rampling. Of course, uh, if you remember the movie The Night Porter, which no one remembers that movie but me, but she was amazing in The Night Porter. Uh, in this, I, I, you know, I'm just not sure if this experiment works. 
Um, visually, it's stunning. I mean, we're looking at these images. It's set in New York City in 2095. It's and very like sci-fi fantasy kind of thing going on. Yeah, and it's also a kind of, you know, and, uh, the story is very reminiscent of a lot of anime films in the sense that it's kind of incoherent and yeah. kind of makes sense if you're paying attention. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, for me, it, it's, it's an experiment that I admire it. I would give it a mild recommend, you know, so, going like, in that direction. So, like, maybe buy it if you have an extra few bucks kind of uh, thing? Rent it. I would say definitely rent okay. it. Um, rent the extras are, are sparse on it, but but it's an experiment that fails, but, uh, you know, got to give it to it for the effort. I mean, it's I mean, unique. It looks cool. There's yeah. not enough of that going on in cinema today. Yeah, yeah. Worth checking out. Worth checking money. out. So we're going to rent that one. Next, Hide and Seek. Hide and seek, you know, if you saw War of the Worlds, you can't get enough Scar Dakota Fanning. Scary little Dakota. Yeah, she's she's scary in Doesn't this. Doesn't she so. seem like she's like 40? Uh, no, no. I mean, she seems she's got smart. an old face. The, the one thing that bugs me about this movie is the, the, the scares are kind of cheap gags. Ah. You know, they're cheap like, you know... Robert De Niro, he's sneaking in the room, and then suddenly a cat jumps out, yeah! and the cat's really loud. So, uh, which is which is great when you're going to the movies and seeing it yeah, you know, right. with some friends. Those <laughs> cheap scares, but on DVD mm -hmm. doesn't quite cut it. Sure. And uh, and then the, the end of the movie kind of turns into uh, like this cold cat and mouse thing. Uh, what's interesting is there are four alternate endings on the DVD. But unfortunately, the four alternate endings are just different versions of Dakota Fanning uh, coloring with crayons. I'm not making this up. I'm telling you, the so, four so endings. So you keep waiting for something like, wow, th like, this is the really different one oh, they didn't choose. And ending number gonna, three. I can't wait for ending thing. number three. And then ending number three is she's coloring and it's a different picture. So, so it's like, um, great idea, but they're not different enough. Yeah, to not different four enough. Different you know, I love alternate endings, deleted scenes. Not enough. I mean, this thing is uh, definite. Pass. Pass the Rama. It. Skip it. Yeah, pass it. Okay, yeah. we're passing on hide and seek, but how do we feel about the Fantastic Four cartoon? The Fantastic Four cartoon, I gotta say, this box set is really cool. Big fan of box sets, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's got this amazing matte finish, the big four logo. You open it up, it's got four discs, each with the four characters. So the presentation is working for you. Amazing, cool box. The problem <laughs> is... The problem is what's on the DVD, which uh. is this, I mean, this is the animated series from 1994, 95, um, and I gotta say, when if you see the Fantastic Four in animation and they're wearing white gloves, that's when you know it's the sucky Fantastic Four. Okay, it's with, good with the, to know. I mean, it's uh, the animation is very limited, the stories are weak. For me, you know, I, I prefer the old uh, Kirby, Stan Lee, those mm -hmm. first hundred issues, which I think were brilliant. There's just, there's not a lot on it, too, in terms of extras. The only extras on this box set are Stan Lee introducing each cartoon, which is kind of lame. Yeah, I mean, it's fine, but that's not an extra. It's like watching uh, cartoons with your uncle, although I love, love Stan. Who but, doesn't? But it just, you know, there's not a lot of information on it, whatever. So, you know where I'm going with this one. I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb and say pass. Yeah, it's a pass. It's All a right. pass. There's better. In fact, I would recommend actually checking out the old uh, cartoons from the 60s, the Fantastic mm -hmm. Four, which are mm -hmm. actually on TV right now. It's on Boom. And if you're like me and you're complete You always geek, have something behind I always got a little here. something. Jeez. If you're like me and you're a geek... I picked this up on eBay for 20 bucks. These already look better than the ones the we just saw. 20 bucks, and it's actually a three-disc set, Aww. and it, and it's all the cartoons from the 60s. I got this for 60. 20 bucks on eBay. Love that. So, you know, so that's you, the Fantastic Four to go. Search, yeah, this is the no box set to here. get. Get the, right. get the bootleg one. Very good. Thank cool. you, Chris. Thank you. Your star. I appreciate it. I'm going to touch my thing. <laughs> look at that. Do that. Just leave me out of it. Okay. Visit filmthread.com or chrisgore.com to help fight the good movie fight. Now, I've rigged your television to explode if you hit any buttons in the next two minutes, so don't even think about it, because you'll thank me, because my damn good download will help make you, I don't know, a lot of friends. No, I, I'm kidding. But it still qualifies as damn good, and Kevin once again explores the crossroads of commerce and mental instability called, it came from eBay. On the next Attack of the Show, Sarah puts her gamma irradiated interview skills to work against the Fantastic Four. Plus, computer security expert Ejovi Nuer raises our alert level to yellow. Is that good? I don't know. And we see how many of you stupidly confused Crash a Parade with Wreck a Parade in our user created. That's next time, folks. And now, like a department store on top of a cursed Indian burial ground, it's It Came From Evil! Very nice. That's good, huh? That's good.
That was one of your finer events. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. The, the kids yep. in the forum love Yep, it. absolutely. Uh, we're going to start things off right away because I, I have a bunch of really great auctions here. Hey, I got nowhere to be. Let's do it. First thing, laser gloves. Got to okay. throw it out there. A pair of laser gloves uh, going for $199. No bids yet, but let me show you these things. I each glove has five red LEDs in the... Look at that! Well, laser gloves! Are you just that annoying guy at the movie theater, but now there's five instead of one? No, no. You have a lot of cats, so now you can, you know, play with all the... The cats what? love laser pointers. What? You know, you ever you never confused a cat with a laser pointer? You are the annoying the guy at the movie theater, but now you have ten instead of one. Okay, fine, that works too. But no, seriously, okay, I'm just if saying. You're, if your cat's sitting, you you run them, then you slam them into walls, or make them jump on Don't the chairs. Don't bring my or... cats into this. I hate these gloves. Laser gloves. Woo! <laughs> All right, maybe someone used a pair of laser gloves on you, didn't like it. That's why you, you go and you get the uh, revenge kit. Ooh. Huh? I love revenge. This this thing has uh, it's going for one hundred and twenty nine dollars. It has bottles <laughs> that are labeled, uh, you know, green gas, evacuate. Waiter, liquid roadkill, and uh, vomit fluid. Come on now. And this is all about getting people back for it's wrong, a revenge for, kit. for doing you wrong. Sure, sure. Now, I would, I could use one of these. I mean, in so many examples. Exactly. Yeah. They do maintain that you shouldn't, you shouldn't use it on someone who doesn't know. Obviously, you should get their permission. But well, we, they know what they did. Clearly, yeah. they, they know they deserve it, how right? Much, how much? Uh, One hundred twenty-nine dollars. No bids yet. But yeah. get in there. Get in there. Go well, for I'm, it. Well, I'm. It's all mine. I know you had a, you had some big festivities this July Fourth weekend. This would have come in handy. I, I don't know if you used one. It's the eight-person beer bong. Now I know we showed off the three-story beer bong, but look at this modern marvel of engineering. Each one, individual valves, closers, it's all there. I it can love hold like, this. Yeah, it can hold like eight, you know, twenty beers. Well, because you know, I mean, the the the, the beer bong is such a sort of group effort anyway, Seriously. and this way you can just kind of get closer to your friends. Feed all the frat buddies at the same time. Yeah. Or double valve it. It happens. I mean, why it not? Uh, Put and, them all in. And if you're gonna fill it up with an intimidating beer bong, why not use an intimidating beer bottle? <laughs> the snake head beer bottle. It looks more like a horse. It's a snake. Look at. Oh, oh, that's sort of a. Yeah, yeah. He's hissing. Ooh, clearly, yeah. he's about Does to strike. Does it come out of his mouth when you pour? Mm, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, how do you get the beer? Well, in? here's the deal. It, it's a magician's prop. What? So I don't know that it's an it's yeah someone fashioned this for like a magician show. The magician actually did it like to like teach. He would go and like teach seminars to like school kids about yeah. the dangers of drinking and stuff. So mm. he had the venom beer bottle. I'm I like, like dude, that it. looks pretty sweet. I get drunk off that. I mean, if you're into Budweiser, this is sort of a collector's item. Clearly, right? Clearly, yeah. Fill it up with beer. And who is isn't into Budweiser? I don't. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> anybody like that. Um, we're almost out of time. Okay. So I'm gonna keep this last one quick. Mm. Quick. Uh, I'm afraid. The tampon Mona Lisa. I don't know what else you can say. Uh, an artist made a Mona Lisa. Uh, using many, many of tampons there as her feminine hygiene products, as her hair uh, and the shawl or the uh, the dress. No, not not a fan of the art for. Well, uh, she is very absorbent. She, yes, she she <laughs> won't drown. She'll just she'll just dry up the river. Woman humor. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. So good. $41. I liked it. Good, good, good eBay, bids. man. Good eBay. Always expect the unexpected when. It came from eBay! Nice. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Now, I don't know what the hell you've been letting on to your desktop, but if you're a fool, you are a fool if it's anything less than a damn good download. Screwed it up. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right. Tom, you ready? I'm ready. I'm All ready. right. Just went from there to here. Having kind of a rough day. It was a long weekend. So, podcasting, are you, are you familiar? You dabble? A little bit familiar. It's uh, letting people hear your music, basically. Hear your music or hear your voice, hear okay. anything you want, sort of okay. an audio thing, take it so with you. So you can do your own radio so. show. You could do your own radio of, show okay. and many other things. I get a lot of questions, though, from people like, what is podcasting exactly? How do I mm. get involved? It seems kind of weird. Anything I don't know how do it works. Anything to do with an iPod? It, yeah. Does it have anything? To, is, do you have to have an iPod kind mm. of thing? Um, you know, all those answers uh, become a lot more clear with something called Odeo.com. Now, before I get into it, I just want to say that it's in beta. Um, you have to be invited, although all I did was send them an email and say, please invite me, and they did. So you can do that too, hopefully. So when you look at the website, basically at the, at the beginning, once you signed in, you have all of these different podcasts that you can listen to, just to sample them, just to say, all right, now, for example, Suicide Girls, if I wanted to listen to the Suicide Girls and see what was going on, I can just give a listen. It'll say, uh, oh, let's pause right now. If I want to play it, <clears throat> it'll play. I get a little snippet, see how it's going. Mm -hmm. And if I want to subscribe at that point, I will just hit you subscribe. You. No, oh, it's not going to be dirty, hopefully. I, I'll, just, I'll just pause it because I don't know if it's going to be dirty, actually. But you get the idea, right? Yeah. So I've subscribed to it. At that point, what it'll do is it will download the podcast and any uh, you know subsequent podcast from this 
from this group, the Suicide Girls, which are a lovely bunch of ladies. And what it'll do is it'll download into a lovely folder on my computer. As you can see, there's it right here. What you do at this point is say, okay, I'm going to now designate what uh, audio player I want to use. I just want to use iTunes. Okay. So that's all good. And then at that point, it uh, can be played in iTunes, and I can make a little playlist called Odeo. And at this point, all my favorite podcasts can then be transferred over to my iPod. Now, is this something that's going to ruffle feathers with the recording industry, or is this all completely fine with Well, them? the thing is, is that this is just a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's a totally different beast. I, I obviously think that, uh, you know, for example, you can download, you know, NPR stuff and things like that. There's going to have to be some... It can be used for good or evil. It can be used for good or evil, and obviously the, the, the people that are putting out the podcast are going to have their own limitations on what mm -hmm. you can do Personal and what you can't ability. do. But for now, this is a great way to get a bunch of new music or voices or what have you. You can also browse through feature channels, stuff that you never even knew existed. Lots of people are doing this, and this is a great way to get it all in one place. Yeah, I've never really great. seen anything that, uh, that is organized as well as Odeo. Mm -hmm. So if you want Odeo for yourself, you can find the download link at attackoftheshow.com. All my other goodies are under Sarah's links that blog. Now, we've got a grand finale planned. We're talking fireworks, dancing animals even. Are oh you boy. excited? I'm, I'm excited. I love dancing animals. <laughs> He's afraid of me. And of course, your emails and chat questions. So come on back. <laughs> Attack of the show, baby. Attack. What's that? You're tired of playing the Battlefield 2 demo? What? You know who else is tired of playing it too? Commies and terrorists, that's who. Pick a side, buddy. Well, yeah, yeah, pick a side, because our Rackspace servers are heading back into the thick of the fight for mother and country. In this week's LAN party, this ain't a drill, soldier. So finish writing that letter home and get in the truck. That's right, Sarah. get in. To register, just go to our website and click on Join Our LAN Party. That's where you'll get all the details and the links to get started. And guess what? We'll see you Thursday for the LAN party. Yay. Let's see what's going on in the IRC chat room, Sarah. All questions. right, Tom, Sarah. you ready for this? I'm ready. First question from Ice Warm. What is Tom's favorite submission on Newgrounds? Oh. That's, Who's that's your favorite son? That's like picking your favorite kid, yeah. Well, my um, parents did it. I yeah, I have favorite it. games, favorite cartoons. Uh, I have my recent favorites, classic favorites. Tom, what's your favorite submission Tom, to Newgrounds? Right now, it's the, it. it's the Raiden remake, and I believe you yes. guys had already featured it. That's it's right. the top-down yeah. Raiden remake, and it just the programming blows my mind. It's got a working pause that freezes all the animation, and that's I don't even know how to do that. And it took like a team of like animators working in a big animation studio to create one, the game? I think just one kid in Hong Kong made it, oh, as far right. as I can tell. So, there you go. Yeah. Okay, next one from Sith Master. Were you shocked when you heard how popular Alien Hominid became? Mm. Um, yeah, it was. It was exciting to see how popular it became. It was also, you know, we worked really hard on it. We wanted it to be popular, so you know, it's not like it. It's not like you see it on billboards in New York or anything. So it's, but it's. Uh, we're really happy with how Pleasant the surprises. success has had. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, been very, been very pleased. Okay, right. next one from Power Nine CS Kleppy. Uh, when will the audio <laughs> portal download script be ready on Newgrounds? Um, I don't when? know. That's when? Stuff when? like that is kind of stays on hold for a while. Right now we're about to unveil the new uh, collection system, which we've been phasing in slowly. Um, and also a new private messaging system, which people have been wanting for a while. Nice. I love the so. PMs. New features yes. coming. <laughs> yes. Great new, features new features coming every day. Cool. Quickly, from Panther, when is Dad and Me going to be finished? Dad and Me is practically done. I put it on the back burner while I was prepping for Comic-Con, because uh, we have a new game we're going to unveil at Comic-Con next week in San Diego. Ah. New console game. Very nice. And, uh, but that to me is, it's so close to being done, and as soon as Comic-Con's over, I'm planning to just finish that up. Very nice. Right on. Excellent, excellent round of chat there, folks. Wonderful first show. All right, after this, there's no more show today. I just thought you should know that, oh, so don't worry. Yeah, thanks to our guests, Mike Berry, Gabe Liebman, Chris Gore, and this week's guest host, Tom Falk. <laughs> be here all week. <laughs> Give him a round Dr. Of Newgrounds. Applause. You're going to unveil your game here first before...